God, not another time lapse. Just post an animation already. Quote, all my subscribers, 2017. Probably. Okay, I'm sorry I haven't posted a real animation in a long time. No, I'm not dead. I just haven't had the time to make anything because of classes. I really wish I could make an animation, but this is the best I can do right now and until finals are over, unfortunately. Sorry. But what you can look forward to is a plethora of content this summer. I'll be focusing a ton on getting animations made along with some other stuff I want to try and it'll be a good time. And to be honest, now is not the worst time to be inactive for a little because of how YouTube has been lately with ads and all. I don't want to put out a video I've put like over 20 hours of work into just to get about $5 out of it. I'd like to get $7 at the least. But I think this whole ad stuff should work itself out in time and things should go back to normal. Oh, and my throat isn't feeling great right now, so my voice might sound kind of... <coughs> but I'm gonna record anyways because I care about my subscribers and I want to get a video made, dang it. Now that that's out of the way, I'll talk about what I'm drawing here. This is basically the product of an idea that's been in the back of my mind for over a month now. Not the idea of what I'm actually drawing, but the idea of making a big thing on this enormous whiteboard wall. On the first floor of one of the dorms at my university, there's a big room that's made for studying and there are whiteboards everywhere. Some of the walls are even made of whiteboard material, which is what I'm drawing on now. I study there a lot because it's good for drawing things like reaction mechanisms and stuff like that on the walls. And I just got the idea in my head that I should make a big drawing on one of those whiteboard walls. And that idea just sort of stuck with me and stayed in the back of my mind. It was one of those ideas that really gets you thinking and makes you excited when you think about it. Sometimes I'd be going to bed and then I'd suddenly think about making the big whiteboard drawing and it would keep me up because I just, I really wanted to do it. So I'm making this partially to help with my sleep. I guess I shouldn't call it a whiteboard because it's not a typical whiteboard. It's a white wall, but not like the white walls in that Macklemore song. I'm pretty sure he's talking about rims on his car and that. Those old school rims that were painted white. Lightning McQueen had white wall tires at one point in the first Cars movie. Now that I think about it, that's really ugly on a racing car, but it's a Disney movie, so whatever. Okay, so while I was writing this script, I looked up Lightning McQueen with white wall tires, and one of the top results was a video where this young kid shows off special edition <clears throat> Special edition toys of some Cars characters with white wall tires. I guess there's just a YouTube video for everything. He even had a Dracula edition of the tow truck from Cars with white walls, and I think that's pretty crazy. I feel like I've gotten off topic a bit if I'm talking about Dracula Mater with white wall tires, but that's just sort of how these scripts get written. I go on tangents and see where they take me. Okay, the drawing. There's definitely more to talk about that. If things ever just seem to appear and you don't see me draw them, that's because I recorded this on my phone, and sometimes if I tried to record too much at once, my phone would get too hot and have to cool down, so it would just stop recording and I had no idea. I think this only happens a few times towards the beginning though, so I get it worked out. But I was pretty disappointed that one of the parts it decided to stop recording at was when I drew the circles for the big cog on the palm. Just because those were some pretty nice circles to have freehanded, and it only took one or two tries for each. Honestly, there's nothing much more satisfying than making a good circle on the first or second try. Sometimes it takes me five or six times to draw a head on one of my characters. I was just... I was really proud of those circles. But that brings me to the issue of having to record multiple hours of video with my phone. I don't own any sort of recording device besides my phone or else I'd use that obviously. My phone only has enough space on it for about an hour of video at a time. That means that each time I had about an hour of video recorded, I had to run back to my dorm, plug my phone into my computer, and transfer the files. And each hour's worth of video was recorded in multiple parts to uh, prevent overheating, so I ended up having about 20 different videos in total for the whole drawing. 
And according to the combination of videos, I spent about seven hours drawing, but it took over a day of working total. I mean, it had obviously taken less time if I didn't have to take frequent breaks to run back to my dorm and transfer the videos onto my computer, or kill 20 minutes to let my phone cool down on occasion, but it worked out, I think. I don't know how many of you remember my last time lapse, the one with the heart and rocks and trees and stuff, but this drawing was actually a lot simpler to film than that one was. I used my phone for that one obviously, but the hard part was being able to position it so that it could film down on what I was drawing. This was made even more complicated because I made the drawing while I was in a condo at a ski resort, so I had pretty limited resources around me. What I ended up doing was I took this lamp. It was a reading lamp, so the top part was parallel to the ground in a sort of overhang but it wasn't flat and I couldn't put my phone on it, so I had to tape a flat wooden spatula to the top of the lamp and put my phone on that. It was the most ghetto recording setup in the world, but it worked out okay. There were a couple parts while making this drawing where the marker just sort of flies out of my hand and I drop it. I thought it would have been pretty funny to play those parts in slow motion, maybe put them in grayscale and add some sad music in the background. But then I realized that I'd have to look through seven hours of video footage to find about three seconds worth of marker dropping, and that's not happening. But if you can find one of those parts where I drop my marker, I'll be very impressed. When I first started making this, it was about one in the morning on Saturday. I just wanted to wait for a time when nobody would be using the study room, and nobody was using it at one in the morning on a Saturday. So, no surprise there. Actually, I wouldn't have been surprised if someone was studying at 1 in the morning on a Saturday because the dorm was specifically meant for STEM majors, so they're basically all just a bunch of nerds. I actually used two different markers to draw this, which may sound kind of silly considering it's a completely black drawing on a whiteboard. The main marker I used was this sort of hardcore dry erase marker that you use if you're a professor who puts all of his lecture notes on a whiteboard. I mean, like, it could be refilled and everything. I did all the main line work with that one. I'm really just grateful I found a dry erase marker that wasn't a chiseled tip. That would have been terrible to draw with. I honestly don't know why chiseled tips exist unless you're writing in cursive on a whiteboard and you want to give it a little more pizzazz. The other marker I used was one that my roommate happened to have. I used that one for the smaller lines, which was basically just the shading. Or I guess not shading because it was just lines without any gradient. I think that's called stippling? Or no, that's the dots. Oh yeah, hatching, that's what it's called. And cross hatching is when you overlap the lines. Got it. If you want to know my process for making this, there wasn't much at all. I hadn't really planned anything out. It was the sort of thing where you get a general outline of what you're going to do and just go for it, then see what you end up with. The only idea I had was that I was going to draw a hand, and I'm going to make it all mechanical, and that's going to be on a big old whiteboard. That's it. None of the specific mechanical stuff in there was planned. I just sort of threw things in as I thought of them. Like, maybe some tubes can go here, this place could use a piston or two, I'll make something that looks like a cog in the center, and so on. And if I ever just needed to fill some space so there wasn't too much black, I'd just throw in some wires. That was my go-to mantra throughout the drawing, just use wires. Whether they were twisted or straight or sort of straight but also overlapping, wires pretty much always looked okay. And the funny thing is, I'm not even very good at drawing hands, but apparently if you overcomplicate them to a ridiculous extent, I can make something that looks like a hand. You know, this may not sound true, but this actually isn't even a very technically advanced drawing. All it takes is some basic understanding of 3D structure and even more basic understanding of lighting, and a whole lot of patience, which is honestly the hardest part about it. But I'm pretty used to making monotonous drawings like that. That's all I did for my final project in the selective art class that I took at my university. They were drawing something like this where you have an overall form that you make out of something that that form isn't supposed to be made out of, if that makes any sense. And with these kinds of drawings, since they're essentially just a big conglomerate of fairly simple drawings, I never want people to see what I'm making until I get to a certain point or make a certain amount of progress because if someone sees it when I'm just starting out, it may just look like a few lines and squares and it really doesn't look like anything particularly interesting. If someone looks at it when I'm just starting out, I just wanna say, it'll look better, I swear, just let me get some more lines and squares down. 
because that's all it is essentially, repeating the same simple thing till you make a quite advanced and busy looking drawing. You might alter the pattern slightly as you go so it isn't obviously the same thing over and over again, but in reality it is. What I haven't had to think about with any drawing before is the order that I make it, or like, the order that I make the lines in. This is whiteboard, so if you even look at it too closely, it ends up erasing or smudging. Because I'm right-handed, I had to make the drawing generally from top to bottom and from left to right to avoid having to rest my hand on any part that had already been drawn. Sometimes I even had to use my left arm as a support to rest my right hand on if I wanted to reach over a part that had already been done. Yeah, I ended up making a few smudges overall, but those were pretty easily fixed. Luckily I didn't end up making any huge gashes of erased drawing from carelessly resting my hand on it or accidentally swinging my arm around, which I didn't think about before but could have easily happened. And a small smudge on this type of drawing is actually a lot more forgiving than, say, you're using ink or something like that, because that stays. It's, it's permanent. It's sort of like the opposite of smudging a whiteboard drawing, because instead of it getting erased, you, like, you get more of it in places that you don't want. Hmm. Anyways, there's this one YouTuber I like to watch called Peter Draws. He's a big inspiration to me and makes these really cool drawings that aren't really anything but are also things at the same time. It's hard to explain. I mean, he just calls it doodling, but I never thought of doodling as a finished product. Everything he makes looks like a really cool finished thing. Anyways, he's done a few really awesome whiteboard drawings, except whenever he's done them, he uses the whiteboard for its intended purpose and actually erases the drawing during the video. Apparently this makes some people angry, but he does it anyways and I don't really blame him. You can't just leave a whiteboard with a drawing on it and never use it again. Unfortunately, I'm not as cool as Peter, so when I was done drawing, I couldn't bring myself to just erase it all away. I really considered it, I tried to convince myself to do it, but I just couldn't. When I put many hours of work into a drawing, I form emotional attachments to my art. I like to just sit and stare at the finished product for a while, especially if it's something like this, where even I have to stop to take a step back and sort of look over everything I just did, because when I'm drawing it, I'm only focusing on a small portion of it at a time. I don't even know how it'll turn out, how all the smaller parts will end up working together in the end, so when I finish and take a step back, I'm looking at the full picture for the first time, just like all of you. So that's why I've decided for it to be erased in whatever natural ways happen to happen. I just can't bring myself to do it. Some people might decide they want to use the wall for studying and erase it. It could be erased by a janitor. It might even be slowly weathered down as people decide to take little bits out of it. Or maybe draw over it and around it. I don't know. It might even be left up for the rest of the semester if people are merciful and decide not to touch it. Anyways, I hope you all enjoyed the drawing, and sorry again I haven't been able to post any real videos lately. I'll get back on that as soon as classes are over. Anyway, thanks, bye.